thank you so much, uh, uh, brothers and sisters. And um, uh, this is the Lord that the Lord has made, and um, let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm really glad that we can worship the Lord together this morning in unity, in mind, and, and in heart. And it is an it's a good opportunity. It's an opportunity for all of us to uh, serve the Lord in any way that we can. Anyway, before we start the lesson this morning, let's uh, let's go to our Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and our God, we thank you for blessing us another day of life this morning. And we thank you for your grace and your love that we may be able to be assembled together, though in, in this platform, but united in mind and in heart. We may be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you, Father God, for uh, the opportunity that you give your servant to um, uh, tell something about your love and your grace and um, the good news uh, that you gave to us. And we ask that uh, you guide our hearts and our minds so that we could understand each word that you're going to be giving us this morning. And uh, thank you, Lord, for all the things that you did in our lives. Forgive us, Lord, for our shortcomings. And thank you for being a great God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, uh, good morning, uh, church. Um, our lesson this morning uh, is entitled, Can You Stand the Heat? Um, uh, we have a saying that if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Um, but uh, this is not the kind of heat that we're talking about going out of the kitchen. Um, can you stand the heat when the uh, situation gets tough? How are you going to stand on your grounds? How are you going to choose between doing decisions? So um, we're going to talk, talk about that this morning. And please bear with me. Uh, there was a saying that one person with courage is a majority. It came from an author. And um, this is true. With the courage one person has, you could lead so many. So uh, we're going to be talking about courage too. But first, let's uh, uh, remind ourselves with this date. September 11, 2001, 9-11, 2001. Can you remember exactly where you were when you heard the Twin Towers were struck by planes flown by terrorists? The images of 9-11, 2001 are vividly ingrained and set in my mind. Although the photos from the sites were difficult to see, most of us remain glued to the television for days. But without questions, or without question, what sticks out most in our memory is the video footage of these heroic police officers and firefighters running toward the towers as thousands run away in fear. In the face of terror and chaos, those men and women ran into the building with a mission, a mission to save lives. What incredible heroes. When life got tough, they were ready. Let us look at once again the example from the Apostle Paul how he displayed this courage. The Apostle Paul was like an old time firefighter. He expected to face danger and hardship everywhere he went. He went into burning buildings on a mission, mission to save lives. He expected to feel the heat and he was ready for it. And he took the stand. Chapter 
chapter 20, verses 22 to 24. And I just asked Brother Rex what version again that he used. And uh, I will read it again on his version, though we have this ESB. As I said, Acts 22, Acts 20, 22 to 24. says, now I am going to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit compels me. I don't know what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the spirit warns me. He tells me that I will face prison and suffering. But my life means nothing to me. My only goal is to finish the race. I want to complete the work the Lord Jesus has given me. He wants me to tell others about the good news of God's grace. Thank you very much, Brother Alex, for that version. Life is full of challenges and obstacles. Just like the song this morning, Brother Carlos, I appreciate it. He said, the battle belongs to the Lord. Life is full of battles. Life is full of challenges. Life is full of obstacles every day. Life is tough. We should be ready. The Holy Spirit even warned Paul about them. Jesus says to expect tough times, but also encourages us to be courageous in the face of adversity and to trust in him. The easy road in life is for passive people, for those who are submissive and obedient to God. But the rocky road is for those who want more than personal happiness. Accumulation of stuff, things like that, and then retirement. The Apostle Paul was not immune to life struggles and temptations. He was a man like you and me. But after his conversion and giving himself to Christ, he endured and became a victor. Let us go through some life experiences that we think that could challenge us, especially us Christians, for the battles that we face every day. And how we deal with them reflects our faith. Can you relate to these experiences? Did your faith and belief got challenged? Where do you usually give in? I say that some examples here. How about work? Are we being challenged at work? Are we, our health, our relationships, temptations, material things, and yes, our own service to the Lord. Let's deal with them one by one and bear with me. Work. Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. There are two kinds of work. There's the honest day's work and the not an honest day's work. You were challenged at work and you did your best to face the challenges and overcome it because you have a faith in God and you can trust that he'll help you with it. Now things work better and more efficiently because you took the right path. God is a God of righteousness. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. Or do you still cut corners? Do you still do sloppy jobs? Give in to bribes? Compromises? Favors? Etc. The Bible says, put off your old self 
which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on a new self created after the image of God in true righteousness and holiness. In which image? Image of God himself. Genesis 1.26 tells us, And God said, Let us make man into our own image, after all our own likeness. So we should be righteous because we were made to be righteous. Health. Do we get compromised with health? Do we do we suffer challenges? Do we struggle with health? Yes, we all do. People say health is wealth. But I got a better one. For Jesus is the great physician. He's more than wealth. Some people will have the test of their faith when it comes to health issues. I know some people who are really devoted Christians when it but when it comes to an hopelessness when it comes to their health, their turns it into something. Some people goes to spiritualist. Some people goes to uh, some witch doctors so, because they said that they're hopeless with the things that they're experiencing now. They forgot their faith. Is your faith being challenged? Can't you trust Jesus in your health? Jesus is a great physician, making the blind man to see by blind man by birth to see mark 8 22 to 26 he healed and cleansed 10 lepers luke 17 11 to 19 the lame man walked john 5 and 8 the mute speak mark 7 31 nothing is impossible with god nothing how about our relationships, our spouse, our children, friends, and not so friends. I put not so friends, sometimes they're just friends, but they're not really friends. Relationship may suffer in many different forms. Over the years, relationships are tested. You could either make it or break it. Relationships like father to a son, a son to a father, a daughter to a mother, a mother to a daughter, vice versa. There might be communication breakdown. There might be a communication gap. There might be understanding. There might be regrets. Some, sometimes our faith is being compromised or being challenged. Luke 14, 26 says, if anyone comes to me, and does not hate his own father and mother and his wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. And also, and how we treat others, it says love one another with brotherly affection. Romans 12 10, outdo one another in showing honor. He even tells us, he even tells us, Luke 6, 26 to 37, how to love our enemies and praying for those who mistreat us. Is your relationship with your spouse challenging because of your faith? You have a different religious point of view. You don't share the same faith. This is challenging. First Corinthians 7, 26, 7, 12 to 16 says, to the rest of you, I say this. If another brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. If a woman has a husband who is not a believer and, is not, and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified or set apart or blessed through his wife. And the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children will be unclean. 
but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever lives, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? And how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Next is the temptations. These are all kinds of temptations, all kinds of sins. These are the desires of the heart. Temptations are the desires of the heart. Maybe that is the reason why God created man in his own, with the mind and the head on top. Because we need to use it first before doing an act. God wanted us to think for better things. We should practice the discernment through God's perspective. Be sober in our decisions. Emotions are dangerous when you allow it to control our thinking. In temptations, remember, Jesus said, no temptation has overtaken you. And it is not that common to man. Oh, this is from Paul. First Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way, a way out so that you can endure it. If all temptations are desires of the heart, so be careful for what we wish for. Solomon's wisdom about the heart says, above all else, keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it, it flows the spring. Obsessions to worldly things. Material wealth is not a problem, but the obsession of it is. First John 2, 15, 7 says that do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is Along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. And then our service to the Lord. Are we being challenged? Faith being challenged when we serve God? Sometimes we feel weary. Sometimes we feel consumed. Sometimes we doubt. Sometimes we take things for granted. We can become jaded. Deuteronomy 11, 13 said, And if you will indeed obey my commandment, that I command you to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. That is the commandment. Serve him with all your heart. And with all your soul. Remove all doubts. And from all those lineups, how about the year 2020? If the corona pandemic is not enough, how about millions of acres of forest being burned just in California? How about the whole lot of shaking going on, the earthquakes? Just previous weeks ago, there were at least three recorded earthquakes in our town. These are the battles that we face every time.
We will never be discouraged because we have each other. It's been how many months now since we started Zoom? Worship and God led us until this time. Being together, united, worshiping and praising God and the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we conduct ourselves in our lives? How do we conduct ourselves? It represents the God that we serve. Discouragement leads to doubts. So remove all doubts. God continually engage, calls us to engage in the enemy. Our sinful desires, the culture, injustice, poverty, and evil. Ephesians 6, 10, and 6, 10 to 20 are, is the whole armor of God. Paul reveals that the real battle happens into the spiritual realm. And if we rely on our own strength and talent, we will be defeated. Our fight isn't real against other people. We have an enemy who will do everything he can kill, to steal, and to destroy. If he can discourage you, he will. If he can divide us, he will. If he can cause doubt and disbelief, he will. The battle is won or lost for those who rely on the power of God. The only way to prepare for and to stand for the spiritual battle is to put on spiritual armor as you enter each day. Expect it and then get ready for it. Real quickly, I will just let you uh, review the armor of God. I'm sorry, it's taking a long time, but I, please bear with me. Our troubles and our struggles, expect it and get ready for it. In the world, you will have trouble, Jesus says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Better still, he promises peace right in the middle of the battle. Christians should have a good night's sleep all the time. For there is peace and assurance in the midst of whatever is going on in your life. Get ready for it and stand against it. The only way to prepare is to put on the armor of God. Be true. The belt of truth. The belt holds together all the other parts of the armor. When you practice integrity and have a clear conscience, you can have no fear. You never have to look over your shoulder or wonder when a lie will catch up on you. Jesus is the truth. So by studying his life and asking him to guide you through prayers, you'll know the right thing to do. Be right. The breastplate of righteousness. True righteousness only comes when your heart is made right by faith in Christ. His forgiveness is forever. should be asking for forgiveness every day. To keep this protection in place. Be ready. The shoes of the gospel. When you wear these shoes. It means that you are ready to share your faith in Christ. You seek opportunities to live out your faith. And to show others the love of Jesus. And you are not afraid to walk into tough situation. Or stand for your faith. Be sure. The shield of faith. The shield is typically large. Four by two feet. This could be interlocked with the shields of other soldiers to form a nearly impenetrable barrier. Faith protects you from the fiery darts of the devil. He tells lies, appeals to your sinful desires, and wants you to doubt God's faithfulness, all with the goal of getting you to disobey God. But faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you can't see yet. It is a complete trust in Christ. Be smart. The helmet of salvation. The helmet protects your mind and the way you think. You need to continually renew your mind if you want to have transformed life. Romans 12, 1, 2. When you get to know his words and put it into practice, you are likely to fall into negativity. You are unlikely to fall into negativity. I'm sorry. 
pessimism, criticism, and complaint. A positive attitude rooted in his truth and the assurance of eternal life bring peace in the midst of the storm. Lastly, be skilled, the sword of the Spirit. When you know that the Word of God, when you know the Word of God, He brings verses to mind right when you need them most. Then you can't be led away by false teaching. Jesus used God's Word to address the attacks and temptations of the bad devil in the wilderness. And you can, you can do the same. Can you stand the heat? Do you have what it takes to be a faithful soldier in Christ? Are you ready for the battle every day? Be true, right, ready, sure, smart, and skilled. Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. So, can you stand the heat? What are you doing to yourself in increasing on this where do you find yourself increasing with these traits what are you doing to work on them you heard the word understood the word believe the word then do the word do it James 1 22 to 25 said do not merely listen to the word and to deceive yourselves do what is what it says. Everyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently, just earnestly, steadfastly, closely into the perfect law, which is Jesus, that gives freedom and continues in it, continues in it, not forgetting what they heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers, says Paul, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, or praiseworthy, think about these things. Whatever you have learned or heard or seen in me, Paul said, put it into practice. And if you go astray and losing the right way, give yourself some rest. When are you going to stop hurting yourself? Don't you realize that the burden of sin is agony? Physically, mentally, spiritually, it hurts. Remember when you are walking faithfully every day, life goes on with meaning. But when you fall away, life is not worth living anymore. Life just goes so quickly, just like the psalmist says, he is like a shaft being blown by the wind, just afloat in the vast sea, being tossed in all directions and lead usually to lost and ruins. Are you ready to recommit yourself, my brothers and sisters? Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Just come to me. All of you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Sin will make you restless. Muscle pain, spasm, headaches, anxiety, fear that will cause stress in your body and in your system that will result in shutting down of your faith. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Come to me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Always make it a priority every day to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of this will be added unto you. When you give it all to Christ, 
He will carry you through. And God will take care of you. Give them all to Jesus. And he will turn our sorrows into joy. If there is any needed prayers, please let us know so that we can pray for you. The lesson is yours this morning. And if you are not yet a Christian and you decided to be one, let us know so we can schedule a study with you and help you learn and understand more about following Jesus Christ. Thank you for this opportunity and for your attention. God bless us all. Amen.